Hey guys, so here we are with more notes for 1G. We've practiced writing algebraic expressions when we were looking at area and perimeter of some figures. And now we're going to practice a little bit more with some word problems and um, gleaning some algebraic expressions from our word problems, which of course would be a great skill when we're problem solving. So let's look at these. If Delilah bought pizzas for $12 each, and P represents the number of pizzas she bought, write an expression to represent her total cost. So we know that, she, that the P is going to stand for our pizzas, and we know that each pizza cost $12. So if I bought one pizza, I'd pay $12. If I bought two pizzas, I'd pay 12 plus 12. Three pizzas, 12 plus 12 plus 12. So that's repeated addition. Anytime I'm doing repeated addition, we want to think multiplication. So if I take my $12 and I multiply by P, whatever the number of pizzas is that I'm going to buy, I would be able to find my total cost. So notice that I wrote this with 12p. I wrote the number first, no operation symbol, and the p. When we're dealing with algebra, we know that this means 12 times p. Alrighty, let's look at the next one. If Gina's recipe calls for two teaspoons more sugar than Greg's recipe, and g represents Greg's recipe, so what's the variable? The variable is Greg's recipe. And what do we know about Gina's? Gina's has two teaspoons more. When I see that word more, I'm thinking addition. So this says write an expression to represent how many teaspoons of sugar are in Gina's recipes. We're looking for Gina's recipe. Well, we know that Greg's recipe has G teaspoons of sugar, and we know that Gina's has to have two more. So G plus two would tell us how much sugar is in Gina's recipe. Okay, let's look at number three. If Tess ran seven miles less than Heidi last week, and the number of miles Heidi ran can be represented by M, write an expression for how many miles Tess ran. So M here, our variable, tells us how many, the number of miles that Heidi ran. And we know that Tess ran seven less miles. So we've got Tess running seven less miles here than Heidi. All right, so if we take Heidi's miles, M, and we subtract seven, the seven less that, height that Tess ran, then we will know how many Tess ran. So Heidi's miles minus seven gives us Tess's miles. All right, number four. If Matthew earns $20 per hour, boy, anytime I see this word per, I wanna think multiplication, okay? All right, or division. If Matthew earns $20 per hour, and H represents the number of hours Matthew worked, write an expression to represent how much he makes total. So we know that Matthew earns $20 per hour, and we know that the H is the number of hours. So H is our number of hours that he worked, and $20 is how much he earned per hour. So for every hour he works, he gets $20. So we would do 20 then times, oops, I was gonna make a P. See, that's an H there, 20H, 20 times H. Again, no operation symbol because this is um, algebra and we don't need that operation symbol between a number and a letter. I think I'll rewrite mine since that's so ugly there, there, 20 times H. Um, and also the number is always written first. If Hillary has P popsicles and wants to divide them evenly between her eight friends, write an expression to represent how many popsicles each friend will get. So we see that Hillary has P popsicles, so P represents the number of popsicles that Hillary has, and we see that she wants to divide them, so that should be a huge clue for us, right, between her eight friends. So we want to take the number of popsicles she has, and we want to divide them by eight. You'll often see a division problem written like this when you're dealing with algebra, so that just means P divided by eight, but you could also write it this way if you felt more comfortable doing that. Either one of those would be fine. All right, we'll practice this a little more in class. Thanks for tuning in.